Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're going to be discussing yet again another diminutive bulldog revolver. This one made in Belgium towards the end of the 19th century. And it is in caliber 320 revolver, known in the US as 32 Colt. We'll get into that a little bit more later. But first, a shout out to my supporters on Patreon. This all costs money and your contributions help more than you know. If you join my Patreon at the $1 level or higher between now and 31 December 2023, you will be eligible to win, courtesy of Rain City Shooting Supply, a High Point YC9 Yeet Cannon 9mm pistol. The drawing will be on January 1st. This is will be delivered in accordance with all federal, state, and local laws. I'd um, also like to shout out to my channel benefactors, like the lovely collector who provided this for your viewing pleasure and has many times been very helpful to the channel and other places and people who have made contributions of ammo, firearms, and all manner of other helpful things. So this is a tiny revolver. So the best way to have a look at it is to go straight to the tabletop. So our Belgian friend of indeterminate manufacture is quite svelte, a little under six and a half inches long, a little under four inches tall, and uh, very easy to slip into a pocket for purposes of concealment, which was its intent. Like many European continental-made bulldogs, it has a manual safety, which up is fire, down is safe can't pull the trigger. Push it up and you can pull the trigger, but I'm not going to for reasons that will become apparent as this goes on. So I've shown a number of bulldog style revolvers and they vary wildly in caliber. Anything from uh, 455 Webley all the way down to 22 short. And uh, this is an American made British bulldog. And uh, it's quite the thing. Now, this gun, which is not the subject of this video, was available as a 7-shot 32 Smith & Wesson, a 6-shot 38 Smith & Wesson, or a 5-shot chambered in 442 Webley, which must have been quite the handful given the nearly non-existent grip. But some examples have trigger guards, some don't. Uh, the American ones and many others do tend to lack safeties. Lever safeties, or as in this case, a cross bolt safety, were not uncommon on the Belgian made guns. And these were all made basically as civilian concealed carry pistols. Now, about the cartridge, 320 revolver or 32 Colt uses a heel based bullet which means like a 22 long rifle cartridge. The bullet is the same diameter as the casing, and there's a reduced section that gets crimped into the case. And these are usually externally lubed and can be rather messy. It is not the same as or interchangeable with 32 Smith & Wesson, which is here. Now, 32 Smith & Wesson, they both use the same diameter bullet, approximately 0.312 inches. But in this one, the case is 0.312 inches, and on this one, the bullet is set into the case at full diameter, so the outside diameter is 0.335 inches, which, believe it or not, allows it to hold more powder. So yes, the anemic 32 Smith & Wesson is notably more powerful than the 320 revolver. Or 32 Colt, which has been called the most useless pistol cartridge ever devised. Um, <laughs> I'm not really going to weigh in on that. You know, you pull the trigger, gun goes bang, bullet goes down range. And in this day and age, that's all that's really relevant because nobody's really carrying these anymore. Now, what characterizes a revolver as a bulldog is a short barrel, generally a petite grip, and a uh, double action, single action operation. Although there were double action only examples. The other thing that characterizes them is this method for removing 
expended cases, which you pull out the ejector rod, rotate it to the side, open the loading gate, line up the empty cartridge, and push it out with this rod. And then it can be stowed back inside the cylinder arbor so you can load the pistol and continue firing. Now, this one has a mechanical issue. The uh, a common point of failure of these revolvers is the trigger return spring. And usually the problem is that that breaks. In this case, the problem is that it actually isn't properly retained so it doesn't exert the proper leverage on the trigger, which is why there was only one shot fired in the video. And um, this is um, very small. I have very large hands, it's true. But even for people with smaller hands, you don't get a super secure grip on these, so it's probably a good thing that it's a relatively small caliber. Uh, as I say, the 40 4 and 45 caliber versions must have been genuinely unpleasant to shoot. And um, this is a very solid revolver. It's very well machined, but I can't, I can't really say it's a good revolver because of this consistent failure of the trigger return spring. Um, and that seems to happen across a broad variety of these guns. It is a flawed design. Now these are all based, loosely at least, on the Webley mechanism. And Webleys I have not noted as having this problem, so they missed a step somewhere. Um, the forehand in Wadsworth, which is a more direct copy of the Webley's mechanism, does not appear to suffer from this issue. I have two of these, and they both work just fine. So, take that for what it's worth. These were made literally in their tens of thousands by firms in and around Liège, Belgium, and exported to the United States and all across the world quite widely. And they're not at all uncommon. Um, generally speaking, the sites are somewhere between nothing to write home about and utterly useless, as in this case there is not even a rear sight. Now, the trigger pull is surprising. It's kind of heavy, but it's very commendably smooth. And the single action trigger is very light. But, again, we don't want to mess with that too much on this gun because issues. Now, in common with all these guns, disassembly is very simple. Pull out the ejector rod, swing it to the side, remove the cylinder armor, arbor, open the loading gate, and you can pop the cylinder right out. So very simple. Now here you can see what the issue is. I can't tell what's supposed to be holding this spring in place, but it doesn't hold it in place. So when you pull the trigger, it just pops up instead of popping the trigger forward again. And as I say, this is a consistent point of failure with these inexpensive Belgian Bulldog revolvers. A little wiggle, and you're right back together. But they are interesting, they're fun, I like them quite a bit. Utterly impractical in today, you know, in this day and age, of course, even regardless of the uh, notably ineffective caliber. But still, interesting and a lot of fun. One thing that interests me is that this, which has a folding trigger, as many of the Belgian guns did, um, is almost identical in size, but it is a five-shot 38, firing 380 revolver, which is a heel-based cartridge much like this one, except it's 38 caliber. So, Kind of a neat, fun little uh, bit of firearms curiosa. Guns of this type, mostly imported from Belgium, were wildly popular on the American West, where, contrary to belief, most people did not carry full-size service pistols, 
They just wanted something small and handy that they could drop in their pocket. They were even more popular in American cities, which were violent on a level we would find difficult to imagine today. And uh, if you shop around, you can often find them very moderately priced. I mean, 100 to $250 is pretty common, unless you go on Gunbroker, where people have often a very optimistic view of what they've got. But the main thing is they're fun, they're interesting, and they're not going to break the bank. Anyway, if you like the video, please hit like. If you'd like to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button. So I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.